Hey everybody, Chad Wilson Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems, joined by Juggernaut Head Weightlifting Coach, Max Ada. And today we're going to be talking to you about training for the super total. So super total is the combination, the marriage of powerlifting and weightlifting. And it's going to present some unique challenges for the athlete, uh, balancing the technical skills, the physical skills needed. But before we get into talking about those, we want to talk about some of the biggest super totals of all time. Um, yeah, this is to our knowledge and more verifiable type of results. Uh, so coming in third place, one of my favorite lifters of all time, the guy who really inspired me at the start of my powerlifting career because he came from this multi-sport background and specifically a track and field background is John Cole, who posted a 363 kilo total as a weightlifter and a massive 1,085 kilo total in powerlifting as a very light 308, weighing about 288 pounds. Second, coming in second place would be uh, a man well known in the weightlifting world, uh, Mark Henry. Mark Henry had a 400 kilo Olympic total and a 1,060 uh, kilo total power uh, powerlifting total. I think also probably one of the only men to have officially been in the Olympics and deadlift 900 pounds. Yeah, because Misha never made yeah. the Olympics. And perfectly segueing right there into our number one uh, super total spot of all time. I know uh, one of mine and Max's personal favorite lifters, uh, Misha Kuklaev, who was supposed to a 460 kilo. And uh, again, these are aggregate totals we're talking about, not necessarily one weightlifting meet plus one powerlifting meet, um, but they're all time best lifts from any meets combined. Uh, so a 460 kilo total as a weightlifter, plus a 1,022 and a half kilo total in powerlifting. Um, yeah, definitely the only person to snatch over 200 kilos and deadlift over oh, yeah. 900 pounds. By yeah, very much the, I think his best snatch was 210. So. 210, yeah. yeah. Like 210, 250 is where this 460 is coming from. Yeah. Uh, so phenomenally talented athletes to be able to succeed in both of those. So looking at some of the physical qualities and the skills needed to succeed, we kind of have to look at the similarities and differences between powerlifting and weightlifting. So some of these similar skills that are going to transfer from one to the other is, of course, being very strong. Uh, <laughs> it's no surprise that it is very important to be maximally strong, particularly in the squat and pulling movements uh, to succeed in both powerlifting and weightlifting. So we're looking for strong legs, strong hips, strong lower back, uh, you know, strong back all over, uh, and athletes who are, who are very coordinated and able to develop technical skill and proficiency quickly. But there are definitely some differences uh, needed between good powerlifting and good, good, good powerlifters and good weightlifters as well. Yeah, the, the primary difference between the two is going to be uh, the importance of upper body strength. Uh, while weightlifters are lifting the weight overhead, there's not nearly as much of a uh, uh, benefit to having a tremendous amount of muscular hypertrophy or, or really, really strong upper bodies in the sense of a really big bench press. Uh, weightlifters just don't need that. Also, the speed component in weightlifting is going to be much more important. It's going to be more critical for weightlifters' success, whereas in powerlifting, speed is essentially non-existent. It's not really a necessary quality that we have to worry about. Uh, some of the competing factors there, the competing qualities between those things are going to be, again, an over-reliance on muscular hypertrophy. Too much training for muscular hypertrophy is going to impede your results in Olympic weightlifting by having a negative effect on speed, possible changes in uh, flexibility or, or range of motion. And then in weightlifting, you know, some of the, the con contrasting things there, uh, spending too much time with, uh, you know, practice on technique and not having the ability to do enough muscular hypertrophy work to excel in the power lifts. Uh, if you don't do enough high volume training or high repetition training, you can end up kind of limiting your uh, results in the squat or the bench or the deadlift. So now that we've established some of the qualities that are going to be necessary for the athlete to be successful in both powerlifting and weightlifting, as you begin to design a super total program for yourself or for your athletes, the first thing you need to do is assess the athlete that you're working with because the athlete's background is going to play a big role in their uh, 
and how the program needs to be organized. So if someone's coming at it from a you know, primarily weightlifting background with very little exposure to powerlifting, so probably very little exposure to the bench press and maybe deadlifting, it's gonna be a much differently organized program than someone coming from a powerlifting background who's never snatched or clean and jerked. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to do is assess what the athlete's background is, how you're gonna to need to emphasize the different skills of the lifts and maybe a, a bit of the different strength qualities needed to succeed. Some of the physical traits that you're gonna look for uh, obviously, you know, somebody who's very strong, then somebody who's got more of a background in, in you know, maybe field sports where they have some level of athleticism, uh, they can move well, they're flexible, they're capable of hitting the positions necessary in weightlifting, uh, the snatch, clean and jerk, those kind of things are really important. Flexibility. And then again, something that's kind of overlooked is uh, how well people tolerate the training for technique and training for strength as do they have the patience psychologically to sort of you know work through the technique versus are they just kind of a you know almost like a meathead where they, they really just don't have a sense to grasp the the training it takes to get better at a skill versus just going in and hammering on the weights and a big component of these the powerlifting athletes transitioning into doing the weightlifting movements it's going to be important to assess their ability to get into the positions necessary for weightlifting and their ability to get in the front rack and overhead squat positions uh, and supporting the bar overhead and the jerk is going to go a long way in determining how much uh, movement prep and, and lighter movement work is going to be necessary in their weightlifting training or their super total training, how big of a component, you know, front rack mobility and, over, and just general overhead squatting work is going to be in their training. Finally, when you're assessing uh, the athlete's needs as they prepare to either compete in super total or alternatingly compete in powerlifting and weightlifting, uh, you have to look at the competition calendar. Uh, that's going to be one of the most important things in determining you know, what the training cycle looks like because if they have a weightlifting meet next or a powerlifting meet next, is going to be a big change on, on how things are emphasized or as the super total is becoming more popular, uh, you may have athletes who are actually doing super total competition, whether that's something like the five bar showdown put on by Josh Rohr, or an athlete who's kind of going out of their way to find a weightlifting meet on a Saturday and a powerlifting meet on a Sunday in the same area and, and making their own super total competition. You have to look at what's up next for the athlete so you can effectively design a program to ready them for that. Now, Max is going to talk about the two different styles of programming that come along with SuperTotal, which is essentially more powerlifting bias training or more weightlifting bias training. So one of the bigger, one of the bigger uh, things, the biggest consideration we have when organizing training in SuperTotal for powerlifting is how far along are they in development of weightlifting and how much work needs to be devoted to the maintenance or development of technical skills in the Olympic lifts. Because your year-round goal is always to improve the big five, when we're in a powerlifting focused period, we can't eliminate the training for weightlifting movements entirely. So a lot of what we do is, is make up that volume that we had at higher intensities with drills and lighter exercises. The big thing is specificity, but also keeping in touch with the exercises that are gonna help people. So Again, based on a person's individual needs as an athlete, as a weightlifter, we assign drills and exercises to sort of accommodate those skills and techniques that they need to work on. One thing we do in the power phases or the powerlifting phase when we're working on it is we're gonna do the power lifts first because technique is our primary goal in the weightlifting movements. It can, it can be trained lighter, it can be done after the fact. With the strength stuff, with the powerlifting stuff, we really wanna emphasize that first. So you'll see that uh, you know, in the beginning of each of these main days, we have a, a, a squat day, a bench press day, and a deadlift day, uh, initially with the heaviest workouts. Those days, all those movements are done first. We're going to squat before we do the actual lifts. This allows us to maximize the energy and time going into that exercise to be, to be most useful for, those, uh, for the development of strength. Technique work, all that stuff comes afterward. We also want to keep it specific so they can practice the best technique possible. So snatching is going to come after squatting on Monday, and then some other general GPP stuff that occurs after that. 
Generally, it's going to be stuff that adheres to the athlete's needs. In this case, back raises for someone who might have a back that's a little bit weaker, uh, and then some hang leg raises as, as a general exercise for the abdomen. You can see on the Tuesday workout in our bench press, again, the same thing. We're working up to our main sets. The volume is acquired, is accumulated there. Then flies are done. There's within super to, uh, total training, we're always having to think about both sports. So the things you do on one exercise and how that impacts the other exercises later and the other side of that sport later, we have to always take that into consideration. In this case, Flies are a great exercise after bench pressing to help alleviate some of the stiffness that might come out of benching. Too much bench pressing is going to be one of the fastest ways to negatively impact snatch and clean and jerk results. Uh, your positions overhead can get worse. You can lose positions in the overhead squat. So what we do here, we've always got some kind of GPP stuff, some kind of like therapeutic type exercises, flies included after bench pressing. It would also be really encouraged for a lifter to do uh, basic stretching and mobility and movement prep stuff uh, as needed to prevent that. Um, then again, we move right into the drills. This is an example here, drop jerk plus press from split of a really light exercise that's done in a way purely to preserve and help facilitate that overhead position and maintain the skill and the speed and all those things that are necessary to execute jerks um, done on the same day we bench press. So we don't lose sense of that. We don't want to go into bench press, then have the next day of the microcycle be clean and jerk and have there be a lot of residual soreness and stiffness and tightness. It's best to kind of pair those things in the same day uh, as, a, as a way to prevent that negative movement pattern from occurring. Then obviously after all that, we have clean and jerks. Our specific practice, we're doing this as a way to maintain the skill, practice the skill, keep the intensity there, keep that basically on maintenance level as low as we have to, as little as we can do to make or to prevent a loss of progress. And then again, curls, general exercises after the fact. We have our deadlift exercise. You can see after the main deadlift work, uh, this is such a taxing day. And especially the deadlift is where a lot of things change in the super total. When we're emphasizing deadlifting, we expect there, because the SRA curve is so big, we expect there to be some negative impacts on the snatch and clean and jerk speed quality is going to be down. Your back's going to be sore. It's going to be difficult to execute the lifts after a deadlift. So we have here competition stance deadlift, meaning that we're going to change the actual movement from what you might see in a weightlifting program where it would be like a clean deadlift or a snatch grip deadlift. This is a competition deadlift, so it might be sumo, might be conventional, but it's going to be very different in technique. So we want to avoid any practice of this technique of the lifts or this technique in the deadlift with the actual snatch and clean and jerk. Uh, it's best to just kind of isolate to itself. Also the amount of work and the SRA curve, like we said before, is so great. There's gonna be uh, a change after that or there's gonna need to be a rest day after that. So once we finish that, you can see there's some general exercises for the back, bent over rows and belt squats for the legs. Uh, nothing really fancy in terms of anything specific for weightlifting or drills. Friday, we have a, a day that we still practice the Olympic lifts because it's necessary to maintain that skill, but it's a very, very small volume. This is really the, the least we can do in one day and still preserve a feel for the technique of the snatch and clean and jerk. Again, after that, we have our large volume day for the squat. Most of the volume is accumulated here with lighter intensities uh, and then GPP stuff after that. We basically eliminated the drills by the end of the week because the fatigue is going to be pretty high. Uh, and most of what we need to focus on now is getting the requisite volume in for the power lifts. And then again, a very similar day to the day before, it's going to be bench press and then the extra volume in the bench press. So overall, you can see in a powerlifting focused week, out of all five days, really two of them are going to be comprised of, uh, or sorry, three of them are going to be comprised of snatch, clean and jerk exercises. We're really focusing on the technique and just maintaining that very low total volume there, mostly single repetitions. And the main goal is focusing on, on technical skills. The bulk of the work is gonna be on squatting, bench pressing, and deadlifting. A lot of volume devoted to squatting and a lot of volume devoted to upper body strength, especially in bench pressing. Uh, biggest difference there between a weightlifting program is that we're putting a ton of energy into the power lifts prior to doing the actual technical work. Now, if we look at a weightlifting focused version of a super total program, 
we're going to see kind of the opposite of that, a big shift. While it's difficult to develop strength, it's not uh, challenging, right? The work is just, the work just needs to get done. So the physiological stuff is, is going to take place. It's going to kind of unfold as we do it. As long as we execute the lifts and practice them and keep them in the program to some degree, we can get stronger in the bench press. Main difference, bench pressing is going to change a lot. The, the absolute amount of bench pressing is going to be a lot less. The emphasis on the power lifts is going to be secondary because strength is a secondary characteristic for us here. Main thing for weightlifting focused stuff is going to be a lot more volume on special exercises to bring up weaknesses. You can see here an example on our Monday workout. We've got a snatch with no contact and no foot movement plus an overhead squat. In this particular phase, one of the main goals we're going to do is try to improve the trajectory of the barbell. We want to make sure that the lifter is able to put the bar in the right spot as they pull. Uh, and this is a great exercise for that. It's also good and when it's included with it as a transition, sorry, from powerlifting focused training to weightlifting focused training because it's a simpler version of a snatch and clean and jerk. The coordination is not quite as difficult to get and it will lend itself a little bit better to the transition from having done maybe a powerlifting focused block or a lot of uh, strength work to the actual Olympic lifts because the explosive component isn't quite as great as in a snatch with contact. And then after that, you can see we have clean and jerks. This is done as doubles. There's a lot more volume here, two clean and jerks in a row. Uh, for multiple sets. We also have, this is an earlier phase in training, so we have a lot of uh, GPP stuff that involves more explosive work like box jumps uh, and then some regular bodybuilding type exercises. You can see on our Tuesday workout where we're coupling bench press and back squats together where we're kind of condensing some of the power lifts into, sorry, for reducing the amount of volume in the bench press and it's not taking a big priority in total volume done. Um, the intensity is lower. It's done after we do our main exercises. So we have drills in the lifts, drop snatch plus sauce plus overhead squat. This is really a more of a preparatory movement and a mobility kind of positional thing uh, for people to get back into doing the actual Olympic lifts. Uh, this block would have come after someone did uh, like a powerlifting focus block. And then we have back squats. A little bit more general here. Same thing though, less volume total devoted to this. We're, our main focus here is going to be on the technique work and getting ourselves ready to do Olympic lifting again. We have Wednesday, regular uh, classic snatch and then clean with no contact plus power jerk. Again, the same stuff. We have specific work for the snatch and then our, our non-explosive, uh, the clean with no contact. Again, to try and facilitate some of that learning and transfer some of the absolute strength we developed as power lifters back into the lifts along with really focusing on the trajectory of the bar. We've got uh, what we call a medium grip deadlift. Uh, this is something that is going to be a little bit more challenging because your hands are wider than they would be in a snatch grip or, or sorry, wider than they would be in a clean grip, not as wide as in a snatch grip. It's more of a variation. Gives us a little bit of a, a break in the monotony of what we were doing before with all the competition deadlifting leading into that, comp in, into that peaking phase uh, for our powerlifting block. This transitions well into kind of relearning that wider grip on the snatch deadlift and, and giving some variation where it's not uh, extreme, we're not jumping into that, uh, where we have kind of newfound strength in our back from doing this, the powerlifting movements, laser transition, a little variety, and then some GPP with shrugs and leg raises. Then again on Friday, you can see major difference here, uh, the Friday and Saturday, any of the squatting and deadlifting work uh, or squatting and bench pressing work is really reduced a lot. Main focus here is on regaining position overhead, so snatch balance, any kind of stuff that we lost maybe in that final phases of a powerlifting block, we have to get back in the weightlifting block. Even if this was the first block done, uh, even if it was the first block done, this weightlifting block uh, before powerlifting meet, the main goal is really to shore up the ability to hold the bar overhead, reinforce all those aspects of that are very specific to snatch and clean and jerk. Uh, so snatch balance, and then we have our positional or special exercises, snatch from the blocks above the knee, excellent exercise for developing good trajectory at the top of the pole, uh, and time to fixation, really improving the ability to rack, uh, to receive the bar faster in the bottom um, and reduce that or increase that efficiency. Then finally, our squatting work, 
starting to shift to weightlifting specific where we have front squats now. These are done. You can see after the main, uh, main work, there's a little increase from the last week. Uh, once we accumulate the volume there, again, a little bit more GPP uh, with med ball throws. We're starting to shift things back into the more explosive work and then some jumps. And then on Saturday, you can see clean and jerk. This is a, an example of where we would have an earlier phase in training. We want to have somebody focus on their weaknesses. So they're going to choose a variation of either one plus two, one clean, two jerks, or two cleans, one jerk, whichever variation is harder for them. Primarily working on the, the aspect that's most difficult and then fixing those weaknesses as we can. And then positional exercises in the snatch pull. This is an example like a snatch pull with three stops. It's something you really wouldn't see in powerlifting programming. Um, there's just no need to, de to deviate that far from a deadlift. Whereas in weightlifting, this kind of exercises, while not specific, do play a big role in teaching the, the position of the lift, giving the lifter a chance to feel out what it's like to be in the proper place and learning the positions. And early in a training block, it's really good to focus on the positions or it's necessary to focus on positions first because if a lifter doesn't know where to be, it doesn't really help to teach them the action and the intent later. And then uh, the main bulk of our bench pressing here is significantly reduced from where it was in a power clean block. You can see just four sets of four here at our working weight. Uh, and then all of our GPP exercises. Something to note about both programs, GPP for both programs is gonna be very similar. With Olympic lifting, it's necessary to have some kind of explosive stuff, some kind of throws, some kind of jumps. Powerlifting, while not necessary, it can be okay, but Generally, you're going to spend more time trying to devote uh, energy to muscular hypertrophy and developing any kind of weak muscles you have or isolating muscles more. In weightlifting, that's not as common. It's necessary, it's done, but not quite as common as in powerlifting. Uh, and then the one thing you probably notice too is the big difference in volume. When we're in a powerlifting phase, main focus, is, and for all intents and purposes, is going to be on squats, bench presses, and deadlifts, and a lot of the volume, the total volume you do, would be shifted to that. You could think of it as total volume, probably about 65, 70%, even as high as 80% shifted to the power lifts when we're doing that, uh, when we're in a powerlifting phase. In weightlifting, pretty much the same. Not quite as much because we still have a lot more general exercises that are gonna be used. So, you know, probably more like 60, 40, 70, 30. All right, so there is your overview of super total training. Again, so much of this is about effectively assessing the athlete and their needs, which really all of training is about that. Uh, and then striking that proper balance between strength development and sort of the tightness required for powerlifting success and the technical and speed qualities and a bit of extra mobility needed for weightlifting. So prioritizing them, balancing out the, uh, the physical and technical skills needed is going to help you set up a successful super total program. And if you'd like some extra help with that, Max offers super total coaching through juggernautcoaching.com. So make sure you go check that out and you can become maybe not the best powerlifter and the best weightlifter all together, but pretty good at each one uh, simultaneously. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to the channel.